Uh, my name is Lucia Smolka. I'm your moderator for this panel. And this panel is called, How Can the Czech Republic Be at the Heart of a Connected Europe? Well, a little about me. I'm an IT law attorney and founder of NGO Open Content. And I also act as a chairperson of Open Cities. I hope you will enjoy our panel and also the after lunch part of this conference. So I'll start with the short introduction of this panel and then I will introduce our dear speakers. So it is clear that open source software has been an essential element of the European technology ecosystem for decades. Around the world, companies and public services are using open source collaborative methods to innovate and create new solutions. It is likely that in any new project involving software, a large part of the code will be based on open source. The use of open source in the Czech Republic is quite high, especially in companies and IT communities. And it's also becoming a large part of public administration. We can even find a dedicated open source portal, which we've already talked about. We have a lot of open source conferences, we have a lot of enthusiasts, professionals, and also fans, and we also have the drive to make the difference. However, in order to really make a difference in Czech Republic, um, when it comes to the use of open source applications, we need to go further and unify our efforts and create a body like we say, Czech National OSPO, Open Source Program Office, to enable knowledge transfer between stakeholders and similar partners across Europe to leverage existing knowledge and also the best practices. So I welcome the speakers of our last panel today to discuss these topics and to draw inspirations. So I will first introduce Mr. Yuri Hlavenka, regional representative of South Moravian region, investor and also author of many publications and articles. Since 1990, he has been involved in many areas of business. He co-founded the specialist publishing house Computer Press and launched the country's first online shop Vltava.cz. Since 2005, he has been investing more in innovative technology startups. Uh, and uh, since 2016, he has been a representative of South Moravian Region and also chairman of the South Moravian Region Council Commission for Information Openness. And he is also a member of the Open Cities Committee and its expert advisor. So thank you very much for joining us today. Please welcome Yuri. <laughs> okay, I'm now pleased to introduce Mr. Petra Zurovcinova, uh, the first chief innovation officer in Bratislava. She is responsible for preparing the innovation strategy for the city, creating a network of stakeholders from academic, business, and also civic sectors. She has a business background. She previously ran the uh, startup Freya Care and helped companies with business development, marketing strategies, and innovation efforts. Petra was the founding executive manager at the Slovak Alliance for Innovation Economy. She was responsible for setting a strategic vision, a vision recruiting members and building networks among policymakers in Slovakia and on the EU level. Thank you, for my, uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Petra. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Jakob Onderka, security analyst at the government's computer emergency response team, which is part of the National Cyber and Information Security Authority and plays a key role in protecting critical information infrastructure and other system under the Cyber Security Act. His work includes critical information infrastructure controls and related technical measures and drafting cybersecurity regulations and dealing with the most serious cyber attacks taking place in the Czech Republic. Jakub is also an experienced open source developer and he's dedicated to increasing awareness of open source capabilities, uses and benefits. Thank you very much for joining us today, Jakub. And last, but certainly not least, I'm pleased to introduce Mr. Karel Minařík, Chief Technology Officer in Česko Digital. Uh, Karel worked as a graphic designer, project manager, lecturer of interactive design at the Institute of Digital Media, 
lecture of introduction to programming at the Department of New Media Studies, Faculty of Art, Chelsea University. And he's a, um, and as a chief software engineer and software arch architect. He also created many websites and applications and also contributed to many open source projects. Uh, as part of this career, he now has taken up a position at Chess for Digital, where he takes care of the technical competence of the, uh, of the organizations and its overall increase. His goal is to take the digital transformation in Czech Republic to the next level. Thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, so I will now start with the question to uh, Jiří Hlavenka. So, uh, Jiří, open source is becoming an increasingly important tool at various level of state and local governments. Would you please share your insight with uh, how about open source, open standards and principles of open collaboration are taking shape from your point of view as a governor of South, South Marie? South Marine region for innovation and digitization. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Ah, for for recording. Perfect. Well, uh, j just first, I'd like to say that I am a real supporter of, of open source software and principles. And uh, as uh, Lucia meant, my my former sins, I have to. Uh, it came some funny story that uh, my publishing house uh, published the first books about open source uh, in this republic. And one of the first, because I see many guys with the red heads pass about the Red Hat Linux. It was in years 2000. I don't know if you have the books in the library. I see Lubo Schmidt as a, as a general uh, director of the company. Uh, if not, you can buy it today still for 30 crown, two crowns, which is one euro 40 cents. Yeah? It is memorably actually, if you cannot use it. I, if, if you can't, I, I maybe I have it in prime, private library, I will give it to you. Well, back to the, back to the open source. Uh, maybe at some top level view is that uh, I, I view open source, not only as a good software solution itself, but as a tool, so set of tools to uh, foster and, and increase the speed of digital transformation to increase the speed of the innovation. Yeah, because, because those tools in the principle, how they are built are, are encouraging innovation and encouraging tra transformation. However, to, to penetrate them in the, let's say public administration, I'm responsible for, for the uh, IT in the, in the in Central Moravia region, which is the office with 800 people, so which is a large office with 200 schools, with 400 social institutions and so on. So it is, it is pretty complex things. It is difficult because uh, if I may use the wartime terminology in these days, the enemy is, is, is strong, has a dig deeper and is well, well fortified. Yeah? Especially when you see this, the, the logbox software is deeply integrated across the department, it is very difficult to replace. Right? I, I think that everybody knows what, what I mean. Yeah? Uh, what we, what we are built, so, so how to approach it, how to address it? What we did first is that we will be, I say that, okay, this is long term and difficult. What is maybe easier and short term is data. So opening the data is something we could do rather easily, rather quickly. So we now are publishing some several hundreds of, of data sets in the intelligent form with API to, for everyone to use. Uh, as I came here, I came across, uh, passed across the Moravia, Moravska Zemska Knihovna, the Moravian uh, country library. Library, we, for example, helped to digital, digitalize the cultural, cultural heritage of South Maria. We are like, like, like written uh, papers a couple of hundreds of years ago to, to digitalize them, to, to put some money to, to uh, digitalize them and to make them accessible to, for the public. Yeah? So those are just things to, to the examples of, the, of the, how we approach the open data. Still what remains are the, are the open software systems. And uh, really this is things that needs a, a lot of time. We do step by step. So it means that sometimes we can replace some fragment, sometimes not. And uh, obviously we, 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 are, we are trying. We, need, we actually need help because uh, administration is here just a customer. We don't have powers to develop. 
Yeah, and, and I don't think that uh, like regional office should, should, should be a software developer. I don't think it is his role. Yeah? But we are encouraging developers to provide us with solutions that we can, uh, and even with, with the ways how to implement. Yeah? This is not, not only just, just, just to, so, so help us to, uh, to penetrate with the open source software better in the administration. But this is a very long work. And uh, I'm happy that there is initiative that will cover it from, from top down. Yeah? This is very important. Thank you. This is a bit difficult with the movement of the mic, but we'll manage yeah, exactly. Thank you, Yuri. It was, it was very inf insightful, and we would like to help in open cities is, is um, uh, penetrating the open source to public administration. So thank you. Uh, as we speak about the public level at the cities and the regions, I'd like to ask Petra. Uh, so as we consider what open means at the municip municipal level, can you tell us about the work of your team? Uh, part of your job is to prepare the innovation strategy for Bratislava. What role does open innovation play in your plans? Uh, could you maybe tell us also about your city website and the open source impact? Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. And, um... It's good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> so uh, working out in the open is crucial for us. It kind of changed the position of being the municipality and telling everyone the top-down approach, like this is how we're going to do things. So we started to work out in the open. It's very vulnerable position because you're going out there and you're trying to uh, talk to people and ask them what they think um, and engage them in the process. So we're not showing them something that is finished. We are trying to co-design our services and what the city offers uh, with residents and our stakeholders. Uh, I actually would like to follow up what Maria was saying, and um, we are facing one of the biggest challenges on our time. So climate change is happening and it's kind of a step down, a step up from uh, looking just at technology because technology can be an enabler to help us solve these problems. But we need to look at it more broadly. Open thinking and, and co-creation and collaboration can help us solve these big challenges. I know that there are many cities in Sweden that are involved in the mission of 100 climate neutral and smart cities. And it is really, really important to co-create solutions and try different types of solutions, pilot them and, and find frameworks for cities, um, the size of Bratislava or Brno or any big ones, um, to try out solutions that could be open, that could be transferred to other cities and create portfolios of solutions that we can spread out to other countries and other cities across Europe and across the world. So that's the way we are trying to think about it. Just uh, It's more broader than just thinking about open source technology and websites. Of course, we are working on our websites as well. Um, and I would disagree with Yuri, actually, because um, we do have our own development team in-house, just because we realize that we need to take ownership of how we develop technologies. We need to have those brains in-house to say, these are the technologies we wanted to use. These are the standards we want to use. And that team works with our collaborators, with our suppliers, and they are kind of leading the change. And without them, we wouldn't be able to be an effective partner for the outer world. Um, we have just finished our website. It was a long process, and it kind of shows how we work with stakeholders. So at the beginning, we really tested every single step of the way from uh, the way the sitemap is, is designed, from designs to um, setting up processes with our colleagues so we've engaged 100 people from the city hall to take part in this process so they take it from as their job and as part of their work uh, to, to have a successful presentation um, and at the end of the day we've published the code for the website on can help which is one of the first institutions in slovakia to do so and we're really glad because we already had someone contributing and improving what we're trying to do so I uh, would like to go this uh, way forward. And let me check my notes. I might have something else I want to share with you. Um, yes, innovation policy. That was also a very interesting um, journey because we, as a city, were very closed up. We um, didn't really collaborate with our academic partners, not as, as good as in Brno, because you have a really nice collaboration here, but we didn't have that. 
and we are trying to identify what are the uh, key areas of research and and uh, business um, exploration because we are losing many uh, talented students to Brno. Uh, they choose to come here or Czech Republic in general. Um, and uh, we would like to keep them and, and explore and kind of enrich our research opportunities and, and have Bratislava grow as strong as Brno and um, other cities in Czech Republic um, with collaborating together. So that's another way of kind of opening up and um, adhering to the principles of collaboration, which I think we can see in open source as well. Thank you very much. Uh, it's really interesting about the website because a lot of the cities in Czech Republic, especially the small ones, are looking forward to uh, some solution which is open source and they can use it easily and we would like to try uh, to help with that. But it's it's a big process and big, big task to um, make happen. Uh, also, uh, part of the open source is definitely cybersecurity. And my next question is for Jakub. Uh, so, um, when you have open source software, a um, lot of lot of different people are contributing to to the software, and, so, and they can possibly search for errors and they can propose modifications. So what experience do you have with the open source software in cybersecurity? What should be taken into account or, uh, in the terms of cybersecurity when working with open source in public administration? Good afternoon. So directly in the cybersecurity field, uh, open source and open standard are crucial for securing communication and for data. Uh, not just in critical information infrastructure, but in the whole internet. Uh, for example, many tools uh, that we use for securing communication and data are just open source. And even if we want to use uh, closed source software, there is uh, not uh, that uh, not the software that is comparable with uh, open source because many many people that works in that field are uh, really fans of open source and they collaborate even when uh, for example they are uh, home after work or uh, during their holidays uh, and the time is also a key factor during handling uh, cybersecurity incident for example you are going to place and you want to help them with uh, to fight with hackers and you don't have time to call your economic department and ask for money for buying license for some software or hardware. So deploying uh, uh, open source tools to fight hackers is sometimes the only way how public administration can do that. Maybe in commercial sector, it can be different. They can give uh, uh, some organization has uh, like money directly uh, uh, assigned to this uh, usage, but in the public sector, it can be uh, very hard to do that because of the many uh, stricter law that uh, public sector must uh, follow. And from perspective like uh, cybersecurity, uh, when when somebody wants to use or uh, uh, release open source software, I think it's two things. Uh, it's so different uh, because using open source uh, software in public sector or in critical information infrastructure is uh, just normal. Uh, it's a long time uh, that uh, this is possible. There is no law that telling organization that it is not possible. For example, uh, in Czech Republic, energy sectors use uh, Red Hat as operation system. So without this uh, open source, uh, energy uh, will not work in Czech Republic. But the security of open source can be sometimes tricky as uh, it was in the question that uh, uh, many people can uh, collaborate in that software. And it's not sometimes you can read in uh, when somebody wants to promote open source software, they said it's more secure than closed source. It's not true all the times. It can be, but it can be not. And it depends on many factors. Uh, and one of the advantage of open source software is uh, it's possible to do software audits. But on the other hand, and from my experience, companies even in very um, even companies that has even a lot of money more than public sector don't do uh, software audits because it's very expensive and it also takes time 
So if you want to deliver software for your uh, citizens, citizens uh, fast, it, it's, uh, it's not a good idea to do code audit. And it's also a problem with uh, cybersecurity because sometimes you have, if there is like zero dates, so that means uh, there is a critical uh, vulnerability and you have to you have to deploy a new version very fast to fix that vulnerabilities. There is no time to do software audits. So my recommendation, not just for public sector, is to start some, some something like bug bounty program. Uh, that means that anybody from your country or from other country, from the whole world, can uh, send you a report that something wrong is in your software. There is uh, there is uh, that there is a software vulnerability, a security vulnerability in your software or in software that you use, and you uh, the organization will pay money. That's for example, uh, European Commission do that. They chose fifteen or twenty uh, software, and if somebody find and so that software is that. Uh, is used by European Commission or uh, organization in European Union. And if somebody finds a software vulnerability, they pay them, for example, for uh, KeePass. If you know that software, they pay 71,000 euros. So this is uh, the way how, if you want to use some open source, you can check if somebody already opened that program, Bug Bounty, for the software that you want to use. Or if you want to release uh, open source software, uh, you can uh, make your own program, but I, I understand that it can be hard for public institution, not just because of uh, lack of funding, but also from the legal problems that can be there. Thank you, Jakub. Um, you have mentioned that uh, open source can take a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of people contributing. So now I would like to ask Karel, um, so how does volunteering fit in uh, um, open source software development in the context of governments? Do you see any obstacles that need to be overcome? Uh, thanks for the, for the question. It's actually a question which is close to my heart. You know, I would first like to maybe address what is actually open source because we are talking the whole day here about what is open source. You know? Is it a JavaScript library for padding string with zeros or spaces? or is it something like Linux or Apache Kafka? This is completely incomparable, and it's really important to keep this in mind. It's not just the you know, big projects we are using, it's small projects we are using, but it may, might be also the services and applications which is produced by the public institutions. Also, there's a lot of big businesses you know, based around open source. Red Hat is one, of course. Uh, there's a lot of people here. My former employee, Elastic, uh, which makes Elasticsearch Kibana, also you know, does a good business based on open source, right? So what I think is important to understand is that underneath there, there are some core values. You know? And if I would kind of pinpoint two, it's openness which means everybody can contribute. I mean, not every crazy contribution will get <laughs> into the main line of the projects, but you can do that. You can usually open a pull request or something and there's some kind of discussion around it. The other big you know, aspect to me is transparency because everything happens in the open. You know, every discussion, every feature request, every bug report that is transparent, GitHub, GitLab, other service like that, and these two values are really, really important when we talk about open source, either in terms of like pre-made pre solutions, like let's say Apache Kafka, or specific applications and services, you know. So to me, the, the other thing to address is that it is human nature to cooperate. It is, that, that is just a fact, you know. Of course, people like to lie, steal, kill, that's also true, right? But we are successful as a species because of the cooperation, not because the ability to kill, right? Like many other animals kill and they are not as successful as, as we are, you know? And that addresses the part of your question about volunteering, because that is what we see in civic tech organizations around the world. And that is actually what we see in Chesco Digital uh, in this aspect. People are really keen 
for this reason, it's not for no reason, it's for this reason of the ability to cooperate, to really, you know, contribute to something. And that might be writing code, but that might be writing, you know, a nice Twitter, uh, Twitter text or contributing documentation or something like that, you know. So to me, this is, this is really important to keep in mind. It's not just a technical discussion and not just about vendor locking, you know, at, that's important, but that might sideline these important topics. <clears throat> As for the obstacles, you know, ironically, the most obstacles we see here and, you know, encounter is the argument about security, which you could uh, kind of trust, right? And I see that is ironic because, you know, the original mantra of Linux is given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. And that is still true, you know. And understand what Yakub is saying. Of course, there are vulnerabilities in open source, pretty severe ones at times, but they are addressed, you know. And it's completely delusional to think that, uh, you know, commercial software doesn't have vulnerabilities like that. That's, that's just delusional. Like people are people, uh, coders writing commercial software are the same coders in many cases as the open source coders, right? So and I'm, I, I like that Petra mentioned that they actually do publish, you know, part of their website, part of the applications or services is open source, because that, that is something I increasingly, increasingly see as more important than the vendor locking, et cetera, discussions, you know. Uh, now let me close with just one example. So the official COVID dashboard for the UK is completely open source is the official dashboard used by, it was used during the pandemics by the doctors, politicians, journalists, everybody, the public, you know. And by completely open source, I mean, it's based on open source technologies. It uses PostgreSQL with the Citrix extension, so it's a distributed database, pretty sophisticated system. It's not just a website. This is a real application, you know. Uh, it's also completely open source in the sense that all the code is at GitHub, the official you know, organization for that particular department of the UK government. And by code, I don't mean just the front end, you know, a bunch of JavaScript and HTML files. I mean, all the services, all the data transformations, because they did a lot of cleanups, et cetera, et cetera. And also the Terraform definitions for building the whole infrastructure. So, that to me, you know, is what we should strive for. And when you look up that dashboard uh, at GitHub, you will see external contributions. Sometimes they minor, you know, it's fixing a bug. Like when I click this button, it doesn't do what it should. But imagine how a developer at the public institution would be happy when somebody just fixes their bug. So that should be great to strive for this. Thank you very much. It was really interesting. Um, you talked about values and motivations, and I think all of our who, who, who are here, we share these values, but I think we have to also to spread it to other communities and other people, maybe other governments. And so I would like to ask Yiri. Uh, so we have seen open source and open, um, open innovation identified as foundations element for government's futures from economic recovery to solving day-to-day -day issues uh, to helping citizens. So what's your view on how open source and the policy context is key to creating successful outcomes for connecting people and governments across the Europe? Thank you. Uh, well, I see that we have some depth here, yeah, that we don't too much, communicate too much across the governments, across the countries, uh, maybe even across the different uh, offices in the, in the Czech Republic. Uh, everybody just loves to, to look inside his office and work, work inside his office. So we, we, we truly have some that we need to start uh, talking, start communicating. Maybe the, this conference is maybe a very good, very good start here. Yeah. And uh, well, I would, I would like to speak about two things. First is to to optimize to share the solutions, yeah? to share the solutions that somebody has, has developed. This is principle of open source, absolutely. Uh, which is maybe the 
little bit difficult uh, things because uh, okay so the solutions are mostly tailor-made on, on individual legislations cultural uh, you know uh, things uh, different the different stages of the evolution in the in the uh, different countries and and the government structures of the government each country has a diff completely different uh, structure so this is not not very easy but uh, it, it even should be done uh, if, we, if, we, if we talk enough and we learn what uh, other country, what in Sweden, in Netherlands, uh, has, has, has uh, developed and get a very good experience. They had the results. Yeah? We, we need to look on the solutions with great results. So, hey, should we somehow adopt this? Should we somehow use it? Yeah? This is something we should, we, we should do. So maybe a little more than just, just to take over what is done. By, by the way, who is a developer here? Raise a hand. Okay, a lot of yeah. So we know that what what, what the developer loves most to write code, right? Write code. This is your job. Yeah, this is what you love. Yeah, to take over others' code, understand the thinking of other developer. Hey, this is this is nightmare. Nobody likes it. Yeah, but okay, sharing uh, thought, sharing the let's say best practice. Okay, so, okay, you develop something in Sweden, it works. Well, let's take just an inspiration, inspire, let, let's do it himself. This is also the sharing of the, and, and this is the connect, connecting and communicating. So I believe that we could, we could look at the smart solutions that have developed around us, take inspiration and try to think how we can learn from that and, and adapt it. Yeah. By the way, we, uh, in the short Marawi, I, I uh, also try to reply of, of, your, of your speech, launch an agency, because we need to somehow a little bit separate it from the from just from the administration, uh, it's called the INAC. This is short for probably nothing, but it sounds good. But this is agency for promoting modern solution for the public uh, public sector. So we have some three or four main directions. One is so let's say modern energetics, that is uh, mobility, and one of them are software solutions. Yeah, so, so this is this is a tool, or this is vehicle for for delivering the solution solutions to the public sphere, to the municipalities, to the other organizations. So this should be a, a let's say a, a, a vehicle to, to 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 do it. Yeah, and I believe that this officer is is, is a right uh, subject to communicate with with others. As, as I think that this is this model is replicated in many countries, so it is not inside the administration, so it is some agency or office which is a little bit separated to have more autonomy. Yeah, this is maybe something that, as Sondra mentioned, this agency, so we, we will not put it in directly as a member of the office, but we will little separate it, give it an, an autonomy, give it a budget, and let them work. Yeah, so these institutions should should work together. And try to learn from the best experience, inspire, and and bring that solution. Thank you. Yeah, communication is super important, and we would like to create the space here at the conference and also after the conference. So hopefully, we'll be able to share more and talk about our challenges and problems. So. Petra, um, with your experience as a CIO, what challenges have you had to overcome? Uh, what advice would you give to other cities uh, looking to innovate their operations and looking for inspirations? And maybe you can share also what not to do, maybe? Well, before I answer the CIDES questions, I would like to say, um, Carol, it's true. Uh, when my developer team gets a pull request from the outside, they are the happiest. So. <laughs> It's it's really nice to have people contributing. But Lucia, to answer your question or questions, uh, I think the biggest challenge was building trust. Um, with my colleagues, public servants are usually not really trusting new things. And when you come uh, as part of design thinking, first thing they learn on the first workshop is trust the process. And it's uh, it's open, it's messy, it's iterative, and it's it's really, really hard for people who are kind of used to uh, one, one way of doing things. So that was one of the biggest challenges. But now the people that went through the process with us really trusted and really enjoy it. And they always come back to us and they ask us, what problem are we trying to solve? What is the reason we're doing this thing? And that's the most important thing. And for whom also? That's what we need to ask every single day. Is this solution beneficial to someone? Does it solve their problem? A really crucial problem they're facing so 
those are kind of the very important things we're trying to share with anyone who's um, thinking about starting the way to work out in the open, because I think it's crucial to be very transparent about it. And part of that is, is communication. So when we were working on the website every single month, we had something internally called show and tell, where we presented what we are working on, what's the progress of the website with our colleagues. And we had a couple of setbacks as well. So we had to communicate some unpleasant things, but we tried to tell them, okay, some things didn't work out, some things took longer than we expected, but we want to invite you to be part of the process. We want you to understand that it is not uh, a piece of, uh, it's not a notebook, it's not a statue. It's something that changes and evolves in time. And we want you to be part of that. So that's kind of um, changing mindsets when you're part of software development or development of any other service or, or product. It's not something that's set in stone that kind of evolves with, with needs, with changing circumstances. We've seen that over the past 40 years, how things change. Um, so we have to be very transparent about it. What we have learned as well is collecting data and measuring impact of what we're doing. And it's also really important to kind of set the, the KPIs at the beginning, like what do you want to measure? Is it money saved? Is it people um, making things faster? Is it, I don't know, um, for example, with, with our tax pilot where we um, launched um, a service to pay your tax for property really, really fast. Um, the KPI for us was how fast people paid and also how happy they were to pay their tax because no one's happy to pay their taxes. But uh, we had net promoter score of, of 90, which is through the roof. We didn't really believe that, but that was a lot of people happy to pay their taxes. And I had people messaging me like, I did it on a waiting on the lights when I was in my car and I'm like, please don't tell me that. <laughs> so, um, and um, there was procurement mentioned as well. So that's uh, kind of a challenge in a public institution also kind of setting up the rules that you can open up to smaller companies and and not delivering, um, it's called, I'm not sure how it's called in English, but it's um, it's um, it's a software as, as it is, um, yellow. I'm not sure if um, you know what I mean. So so it's it's more about, yeah, a yeah, piece, of, piece of work uh, rather than working with your partner as, um, as a collaborator or with your service. And one last thing I wanted to mention, which was really um, good for us. So we started a city hackathon called Climathon, and we had lots of different people contributing and we starting through pandemic. So the first one was fully online and we had people coming to us and trying to solve our challenges. And we are still working with the teams from the first year. So these are kind of our volunteers. They, are, they keep coming back to the city and it builds a relationship with the city as well, even though it's it's much harder to kind of work with the broader ecosystem. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I maybe I do one more challenge because what we experience is sometimes people like to start projects. Maybe it's not open source specifically, but people like to start projects and the finishing is the hard part. So that's what we um, dealt a lot of this. Um, also, um, back to the Jakub, uh, to Jakub. Uh, what are some uh, major cybersecurity challenges that governments face when collaborating on open source software and open content? Um, do you have any advice you can you can offer on how to overcome these challenges? Uh, what is what is your opinion maybe on the upcoming European Union legislation? And could you give some examples how to address this or where to get inspiration from? Thank you. Uh, as I know, there is no legal problem, as we said, when using or contributing to uh, open source pro uh, open source project as uh, public sector in Czech Republic or uh, in uh, some or from uh, legislation of European Union. So that's okay. But the main problem, as I see in public sector in Czech Republic, is lack of uh, knowledge, lack of uh, experts in that field, because uh, Czech public institution usually outsource do uh, outsource all of the development, all of the expert uh, work. So inside 
of that of that institution there is nobody that uh, can uh, said that the software is good that software is not good they altered that uh, work and when you the only and the, uh, the problem with open source in as we talked about that in previous panel uh, in procurement uh, according to some lawyers in Czech Republic they said it's not possible to request uh, your dev the external company to deliver you uh, open source software you cannot put requirements deliver uh, the the, rec the code must be open source uh, because they said this is uh, discrimination uh, so if everything is outsourced and uh, everything and you cannot request open source it's a problem so and you don't have uh, internal people that can that can uh, develop uh, software so, but one public institution one city maybe two years ago they want to because they uh, somebody some external entity uh, code uh, one application for making grants uh, and uh, the city uh, wanted to release that code for other cities so they can use that and uh, with cooperation with open cities and that uh, city uh, we receive that code and check it before they release it for public and we find out that there are many security vulnerabilities so if uh, the city release that code i think the their system will be hacked in one or two minutes because there was a really a basic security uh, problems so the security is really important as it, because if you have closed source the vulnerabilities are there but nobody it's very, it's it can be harder to find them if you have code it's it, it's much easier for potential hackers to find uh, to find the vulnerabilities and they can report to you or use and get the money from you for example from ransomware so that's the reason why i said in the first uh, part of my presentation that uh, the bug bounty are one of the solution for that and another solution is you need expert knowledge inside the organization and check uh, if uh, the code is okay and it's a reasonable uh, to, for uh, anybody for public and uh, to make it this, this thing easier uh, our agency release a recommendation for public sector that they can use not just uh, that they can use when they are, uh, uh, when they uh, want to release uh, their products as open source currently is available just in uh, Czech language uh, and it's available on our github uh, but we plan to translate that recommendations to English in near future and the organizations uh, can use that uh, for not just to check the code according to the rules but they also can provide the recommendations to their uh, external partners so they will follow the rules by themselves Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the cybersecurity question is a big one, and we need more people who are able to help with it. So, yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, with your help, we will we will make this better. So, um, Carol, uh, you have experience from different types of projects, both commercial and non-profit. So what do you think the, the biggest advantages of the Czech environment are? And maybe do we have any projects we can, we can uh, um, export to, to the other states and um, yeah, uh, build on them for further cooperation? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I know we are short on time, so I'll keep it short. Uh, when, when the projects would be in the context of uh, public or government services, I'm afraid it's the other way around. <laughs> we don't have much to teach anybody. Uh, and this is paradoxical, right? It's, again, you know, ironic. Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia, you know, it's uh, really historically a technically advanced country. You know, there's a lot of technological innovation happening here. There are many successful technological companies. As Jakub usually says, e-commerce in Czech Republic is really, you know, a high standard. 
for everybody. But when it comes to the public sector services, public sector applications, that's, you know, just a disgrace. You know, we had a good go a couple of years ago, for instance, the data boxes, datové schránky. That was a, like, semi-successful project at that time. But when you think about it, it's a glorified file sharing system, you know, with notifications. It's, it's crazy, you know, it's for sharing PDFs. Right, so th that's that's the paradox. You know. For instance, in Greece, which I don't think anybody here would describe as a historically technically advanced country, I'm not talking about 2,000 years ago, right? Like the, the last century, they had a pretty sophisticated system for tracking lockdowns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe we were lucky we had no such application, so you could do whatever you want here. But you know, the point stands. So. Another good example, which is kind of ironic or paradoxical, is bank ID, you know. And I always say bank ID, that's an absolute success and an absolute failure, you know. For some of the maybe foreigners uh, who don't know what bank ID is, it's a way how you can authenticate to government services online through your bank account, because obviously the bank knows who you are, right? Uh, so we had some half-baked solutions for that here provided by government but, but the usability is so you know crazy that actually the local banks they formed a conglomerate of banks and did this service for everybody to use you know which you can say that's a huge success but also the state should probably provide a service like this in the same way you know in the same usable way right so on the other hand, to, to you know, end on a happy note, I think that that is maybe something to export, you know, to uh, not be afraid of cooperation with the commercial or business sector, because this is a really great solution. Like everybody who uses Bank ID in this country, they're like, this is great, I love it. You know, I, I will never ever use anything, you know, else again. So uh, maybe that's one thing where we can share some, some success here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the positive ending. Uh, yeah, the bank ID is the thing we um, could show up uh, to other people. And so we are, we are uh, nearly at the end of our panel. So my last question is to Yiri. And so we are in the middle of European presidency of European Council. Uh, Czech president of European Council. So um, do you see something uh, we can do to encourage the connection between the EU, uh, the member states and the Czech Republic? Um, do you see anything that is the Czech to, to do it? Well, thank you. Obviously, presidency is a very, very short time frame. It is half a year. This is uh, not a time to, to achieve significant, but, but to start things. Yeah? This is good, 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 good timing and good place to start uh, the timing. Uh, as you ask for the, what is unique, yeah, this is difficult to, to answer. Uh, I would maybe say that we are the, the, the best country, best place to, to host the conferences from various reasons. First, we are in the middle of Europe. Second, that we here in Brno, we, we have an airport with no flights, which is also unique. And we have the best uh, beer, wine and spirits together. Yeah? This is a paradise, obviously. Yeah? But on the more serious note, uh, our country is, let's say, IT heavy. We have, we have really uh, maybe one of the largest number of IT specialist coders uh, compared to population uh, in Europe from some historical reasons. I, I really think, I really mean that. Yeah? And we have a lot of great team, a lot of great comp uh, co companies. Uh, there are areas that we are, I would not say that we are the best, but we are strong, yeah? which is, I would like to point out the AI and big data. Yeah? We, we, have we have great teams and great companies, great competencies in these two areas. And you know that in public uh, sector, the, this is all about the great, da great data. We have a lot of data. We, we have no smart tools to analyze, uh, to, to, to have some outcomes for all politician decisioning. Yeah. This, this is something we need, but we have something to offer. And we are also very strong in cybersecurity, as, as, as actually you mentioned. Yeah. We have, again, would say that we are one of the strongholds of security, cybersecurity. Not, not as good as Israeli guys, but they are keeping it secret. So we are, we are willing to share a little more. Uh, we have also some nice organization here, 
maybe this is not unique, but it is a nice contribution. Like, like is like a uh, Česko digital, like the Otevřená města, like is open art that are contributing. We have great university as we are on the premises here that uh, are very strong in open software. The, the Faculty of Informatics is, is a stronghold of, of uh, open software. I have um, another funny story to say, but not, not, not here, not now. So those are things that we can we can contribute, maybe not unique, but we are strong in, the, in that. Perfect, thank you very much for the closing note. And this is the end of our panel. I thank all the panelists for the insights and expertise. I think it was a great panel. So please, big round of applause for the panelists. <laughs>